Welcome to Foldit Lab Report number 12. I'm BKEP here at the Institute for Protein Design in Seattle with my colleague Ian H behind the camera. If this is your first time watching a Foldit Lab Report, we publish these on the first of every month to give you a behind the scenes look at the research we're doing with Foldit. This month, we have a big update about some coronavirus lab results. But first, I want to plug a brand new feature. If you know any students or teachers who are struggling right now with remote education, please let them know about Folded Education Mode. We've known for a while that Folded can be a great tool for teaching biochemistry and proteins in the classroom. And we're a big fan of any high school and college teachers that have been using the software. But the truth is, Foldit has never been designed specifically for education until now. We just made a video about the new Foldit education mode, so you should check that out and please share with any students or teachers in your life who could benefit from a free online learning tool. But back to our COVID lab results. This month, we finally tested 99 spike binder designs from Foldit players. And we wanna give a big thank you to the BioFab group here at UW who has been helping us run these experiments during the pandemic. Unfortunately, we did not see anything that binds within the limits of detection for this experiment. You should check out the blog for more details and you can see the raw data direct from the experiment. But before you get down, we do have some good news. Scientists at the IPD have designed small protein binders that can stick very tightly to the coronavirus spike and block infection, at least in a test tube. You can read about these new results in an online preprint manuscript, meaning that these results have not yet been peer reviewed. So how did they do it? Well, you might be surprised to learn that scientists designing proteins in the lab do it nothing like the way we design proteins in Foldit. For example, say you want to build the perfect chair. One way to do this would be to go to Chairs R Us and sit in hundreds and thousands of different chairs to find the perfect chair that suits your needs. The other way to get a perfect chair would be to have someone build it specifically for you. They might take measurements of you or ask you detailed questions about how you want to use the chair. Is it a recliner or a lounge chair? And then they would design the chair specifically to meet your needs. Almost all of the professional scientists design proteins using the Chairs R Us method. That is, they design hundreds and thousands of different proteins, then check the binder metrics and throw out 99% of those that don't meet our criteria. This method is not perfect, but it does mean that we can throw lots of computers at the problem. And we do. But we also built Foldit so that we could explore the other option. That is, we think individual people can use spatial reasoning skills to solve these problems in a way that algorithms can't. Foldit is all about human creativity and problem solving, which are skills that we just can't automate. In this case, the scientists designed over 2 million proteins and found that just about 100 of them bind to the spike target. The best of these neutralize the virus even more efficiently than the best known antibodies. These antiviral designs are now going to be tested in animals. So where do we go from here? This is great news and we can use this progress to help make Foldit better for binder design. One thing that was confirmed in this study is that certain binder metrics matter a lot when we're trying to design a protein that sticks to a target. We've created a sandbox puzzle in Foldit where you can check out the tightest binders from this study and see what the binding metrics look like in Foldit. And that brings us to our puzzle updates. In our first puzzle update, we are continuing to develop binder metrics and binder design tools for Foldit, and we have been running more of the coronavirus and coronavirus anti-inflammatory binder design puzzles. This month, we released some new prototype objectives that show these binder metrics in Foldit. These objectives are very slow, and that's because they're running some very intensive calculations on your protein that we simply can't speed up. The prototypes were supposed to be non-intrusive, they don't affect your score, and can be safely ignored, but we did see that they were affecting a lot of recipe usage in Foldit, so we will be putting the brakes on that um, until we can fix those issues with recipes. In the meantime, we are continuing to run these binder design puzzles. The more Foldit designs we get, the more we can learn about binder design. Our other puzzle update is in symmetric design. We have been running a mix of the hydrogen bond network puzzles and the limited interface design puzzles 
to try to improve symmetric protein design in Foldit. We talked a lot in our last video about limited interfaces, so please check out lab report number 11 for more details. And that brings us to this month's design of the month. This month we have a trimer design from puzzle 1879. This is a design from Grogar 7. Um, and we see we have uh, three subunits here with a, um, it looks like a uh, ferrodox fold with two helices on top of four beta strands. Um, at first glance, uh, I'm a little bit wary of this design. We see we have a buried edge strand. Um, remember that a beta strand, a beta sheet, has polar atoms all up and down the length. And normally, these make hydrogen bonds with one another. Um, they make hydrogen bonds with the sheet next to it. Um, so these two strands line up and they form this ladder of hydrogen bonds. But when we bury an edge strand at an interface, um, these exterior polar atoms cannot make hydrogen bonds with water. But Grogar 7 has pulled a feat and has managed to satisfy these edge polar atoms with side chains. If we zoom in here, we can see here that across the protein interface, Grogar 7 has managed to place side chains that satisfy these polar atoms on the sheets. Um, so this is really great to see. Um, very difficult to do. Um, I, in general, I would not recommend this strategy, but in this case, it's a pretty audacious design strategy and it looks like it might work out. We do want to be careful. There are a couple of buried, unsatisfied polar atoms in this design. Um, and those can be a problem. Um, but by and large, Grogar 7 has done a great job of looking out for these buried, polar, unsatisfied atoms at the interface. Remember, we have set up a sandbox puzzle where you can check out the design of the month and see Grogar 7's great work and fold it. That's all we have for this month. In September, you can look forward to office hours with Foldit team members Neil PG628 and Beta Helix. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next month.